You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atta al-Laz Fim's Book of Wisdoms, Al-Hikam al-Ata'iyya, a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit secretshub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na Wa anfa'na bima alimtana Wa zinna ilman mifadika Wa anfa'na bima alimtana Wa zinna ilman mifadika وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين. So we're in <coughs> reading and explaining the hikam of Sheikh Ibn Taylah. So we're in the number fifty-three <coughs> of this hikma, talking about uh, uh, weird and wired. The weird <coughs> is what. Uh, is anything that you put forward that you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that comes from you it could be anything dhikr, recitation of Quran any works that you hope and that you intend to draw yourself closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considered a wirt and what happens is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to the servant he blesses the servant he may send him with insight he may send him or her with uh, an understanding that they may not have understood before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may send the servant a uh, insight about what or a choice to make uh, that they have to make. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may send them a uh, may send them a uh, ilham or uh, a uh, inspire in them to make a certain choice or to do a certain or to do certain things or what not or to start even new ibadat or to continue in certain ibadah uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is, from, this is a warid this comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the servant and they may come they may, they may frequently come and they may come all the time but the servant may be prevented the servant may prevent himself or herself from uh, from uh, seeing them or from adhering to them or from noticing them to serve how does the servant prevent themselves from seeing the guiding hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, because he puts things in front uh, in front of himself between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he places a hijab he places a, a veil and so those veils may prevent one from noticing a wadid, may prevent him from noticing uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending him a uh, sending him a uh, a grace or sending him uh, <coughs> or sending him inspiring him to do something and that's because of what the servant has. So he says, Ibn Ta'Allah, he says, Awradaka, alayka al warid, limuka min yad al akhyar, min yad al akhyar, wa yuhayruka min rik al athar. So he says, He made, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, made experiences come to you. He made experiences this warid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it come to you. Or he made it came, uh, come to you, these, these warid, these inspirations or these experiences. He made them come to you for what reason? Uh, so that it frees you from the hand of anything besides him. So that it frees you from the hand of anything besides him. And we'll explain and uh, and to redeem you and to redeem you from the bondage of his uh, of his ephemeral, ephemeral traces and to redeem you from the uh, from the very uh, uh, thinness 
of traces or from the very faintness of traces or faintness of of athar of traces and so he uh, what does he say he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awrada alayka awarid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings uh, the warid to you he brings these inspirations or he brings these experiences from you come to you for what reason in order to free you from the bondage of anything besides him to free you from being enslaved from anything besides him what does Allah subhanahu wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the servant to recognize that he is the is he he is the one that you should pay attention to hmm? that he, that <clears throat> He is the one that you should pay attention to when it comes to what, when it comes to everything. Successes, when it comes to you, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So pay attention to and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the successes that you have. Don't, it's not coming from you. It's not coming from you. It's not coming from your hands. It's not coming from uh, someone else. Is not coming from the creation, the successes that you have. Is not coming from anyone. It's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends wari to you. He sends spiritual experiences to you. He sends inspiration to you in order for it to capture you and to take you back from being enslaved by, the, by other than him. Being enslaved by material things or being enslaved by things that you think that uh, that you're benefiting from or you're taking benefit from. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to be enslaved by the by the creation or by the or even by your own self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you to be enslaved by the power that you think you have or that you possess. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be enslaved to Him. To Him. And so He sends wara to you an inspiration, a spiritual experience to you, for what reason? To, to prove to you that everything comes from Him. To prove to you that everything comes from you. And, and to take you out of enslaving yourself or bondage to other than Him or besides Him. To take you away from, from being attached to this world. Being attached to this world. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can can do this in another way. How can he do this? He can send a test to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can take you from this being enslaved or from the bondage of other besides him by sending a test to you. A test to you that does what? A test to you that proves to you that nothing is going to lift that test except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send uh, can can capture or take back the servant from being enslaved to even himself or to other mm, to other things or to other people and focus the servant back onto him solely by sending you a trial or a tribulation or sending you something hard that you have no other way out except to ask of your Lord to ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here Ibn Atta'illah, Shaykh Ibn Atta'illah, he's saying that how the, one of the ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it, besides sending you a test or a trial, is to do what? Is to send you a warid, is to inspire in you something, or to give you a spiritual experience. This is the other way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that the person sees, this is the, uh, that the person sees the, the rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person sees the rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it and he's inspired to change. He's inspired to do what? He's inspired to, uh, to change. He's inspired to change. And that may come through, a warid may even come through other people. It may even come through other people. Uh, but it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the person may be, uh, the person may be sitting, mm, and he may be uh, enslaved to this world, or enslaved to his own self, or his own thoughts, or his own might, or his own power, or whatnot. 
and he stands in salah and he hears the Quran being recited and one verse affects him and changes his completely and changes him completely and so he focuses back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one verse may be a verse that he's heard before many times but it never affected him until that period of time when that person or that imam recites it or he's casually uh, he casually he, he, he's going somewhere and he sees uh, something or he experiences something or something catches his eye and immediately he thinks about uh, he thinks about an eye or a hadith or he thinks about correcting himself or herself but it came through what? it came through other but it still comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so at that moment the servant uh, the servant turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so the servant is immediately then becomes a slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it can happen at that very moment. A warid can happen at a very instant, that there's an instant change in the person. It could be a very instant change in the person. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes people. And He may change them immediately. And the effect may be immediately. Or the effect may take some time to be seen in the servant. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sends the warid to the person for him to or her to think and to ponder and to reflect on what he sends to them. And he says at the end, he, he sends these, these warid to you, these spiritual experiences to you in order to free you from the bondage of people and to redeem you or to free you from, uh, from what? To redeem you from the the... Uh, the thinness of traces, the thinness of of, of athar of traces. These are what uh, the athar are, are traces of what of traces of of this world, of uh, the traces of of, mata, of of this dunya that people may uh, think is everlasting. They may think that it is everlasting and they may think that these things are the uh, are the end all and be all but these traces are just traces that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to leave and they are a sign of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I thought these traces are from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so one has to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when one sees them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes these these wari come to you in order to for you to uh, to redeem you from the bondage of these ephoral truth these uh, these uh, traces of this world he sends them to you to redeem you from being meaning what being captured by the display of this world this is, this is what he's saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you spiritual experiences wari in order to take you from being dazzled by the, by the traces of this world, by the beauties of this world, by the things that occur in this world, by the beauty and the things that occur in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the servant to go beyond the traces of this world to look beyond what is in sight, what you, what you see through your human eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through you know, colors and shapes and forms and so on, this is what we see and through our eyes, our physical eyes. This is what we see through this limb. The eye is a limb. We see, tr- we see forms and we see substance and we see depth and we see colors and we see shapes and so on. This is what we see through our eyes. Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to look, to look at things through something else. He wants you to go beyond the physical being of those things and look to the creator of those things. To look to the creator of those things. Because those things will disappear. Those things only have a momentary last. They only last momentarily in this world. Everything lasts momentarily in this world. 
But if you look beyond those things and look to the creator of those things, then that look will be everlasting. That look that, that, that you see, that insight that you feel, that will last forever. That will last forever. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings water to you. He brings uh, these insight to you, these experiences to you, these, uh, these, some even ilham, these inspirations to you in order to remove you from being enslaved to this world and enslaved to the things of this world or being dazzled by the things of this world or to be, or becoming engulfed in the beauties of this world. And he wants you to move beyond, and he wants you to move to him. Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to, and so this is one of the reasons why he brings spiritual, he doesn't, he doesn't bring spiritual experiences to you so that you may think that you're special. It's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't bring ilham, he doesn't bring inspiration to you to think that you're special. One of the inspiration Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to the servant is for him to come to, the, to a masjid. To praise prayer, hmm. but he doesn't do it. He doesn't. He doesn't bring you inspiration. And warid, warid is 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 go is something that comes that changes you. Hmm. So he may bring you a warid for you to come to the masjid to pray. Coming to the masjid to pray, maybe a warid from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, not in order for you to think you're special. These things are ordinary. What we do today is ordinary compared to what people did in the past. Very ordinary. Hmm? Coming to the masjid even five times a day is very ordinary. That's not special. It may be special in comparison to the time that we live in, but it's, or, it's ordinary to those of the of the salihin. It's ordinary to those of the muttaqin. It's ordinary to those who were who are, you know. They are siddiqeen. Ordinary. These things are ordinary. What we do today are ordinary. It pales in comparison to what people did in the past. The great salihin, what they did in the past. Pales in comparison to what we do today. And so these things are ordinary. They're just ordinary. And so we should not get caught up in them. Not, we should not get caught up in the fact that the things that we do... That we that that it deceives us into thinking that we're better than others, or that we are special than others. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not. Only if Allah Subhanahu wa sends us other things that we should, that we can do, or reflections that we can have, then we may become special to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But don't get caught up in the warid that comes to you. Don't get caught up in it. Because the the warid are supposed to take you and give you insight away from from being attached to this world or being uh, uh, being dazzled by the beauties of this world or being dazzled by the things that you may have or the things that you may take or the things that you may buy or the things that you may acquire in this world or the things that people may give you in this world. These things are not lasting and they're just traces traces that may keep you from looking beyond them and so look at the creation and look at the things that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be thankful because if you're thankful then you'll be able to see the, the these warid that come and you may be able to put them into perspective and it may launch you spiritually into uh, looking and it may better even the things that you do. Awara may not come in order to get you to do something or to increase in something. A wari, a spiritual experience, it may not come in order to increase you in ibadah, but it may come in order to give you more quality in your ibadah. The same worship that you do may become better. It may become better uh, to you. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Help us and guide us, forgive us, have mercy upon us, send to us the wire that he sends to us. May Allah help us to see it, notice it, recognize it, act upon it, and behave in accordance to it, to him as our creator. May Allah increase us in knowledge and practice of deen, protect us, protect our families, our children, 
protect our elders, our parents, give them good health and long life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him on his deen. Preserve us on our deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our children. Keep them, their footing firm in his siyatul mustaqim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of this world, the best of the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our homes amongst the homes of the believers and make our last words our best words. Subhanakul hamdik shadu wa la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubi ilaik. Thank you for listening to the Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.